Hey, I'm Rachel Abbott and welcome back to the Standards Tech and Science Daily podcast. Coming up, a new personalised treatment for Parkinson's approved for use in the UK and EU. But first... The UK Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, has set out the government's AI Opportunities Action Plan with aims to boost the UK economy. Most people who only a few years ago were saying it probably take a decade before AI uh, makes the sort of change that have been talked about are now saying, no, more like five years, even four or three. So AI is changing things very, very fast. Um, and that's why we need to create the conditions uh, so that this country can be at the forefront of that. That's the Prime Minister answering questions from reporters at the event at University College London. Alongside the proposal, written by tech entrepreneur Matt Clifford, Sakir said in Monday's speech that the plan for Britain will be one of the great AI superpowers. This is the nation of Babbage, of Lovelace, of Turing, that gave birth to the modern computer and the World Wide Web. So mark my words, Britain will be one of the great AI superpowers. Now, that's not some sort of boosterism or wishful thinking. This can be done, and it will be done. The plan includes new data centres, building a supercomputer, and controversial plans to allow tech firms to use anonymised NHS data to train AI models as part of a package that includes £14 billion investment by tech firms. Well, the news today coming out of government about an investment in AI is, for me, welcome. It's also good to hear that there are some investments coming from the private sector to big that up. And the focus on productivity is also something that seems very apropos for, say, a generation The UK has lagged behind, uh, let's say, nations that you would compare the UK to in terms of economy um, size and population size. And it's been vexing for economists to kind of put their finger on why exactly that is. That's Dr. Mark Kennedy, Associate Professor of Department of Management and Entrepreneurship at Imperial College Business School. Dr. Kennedy's current projects includes the evolution of AI and its impact on work, organizations and society. I would say what we need to do in addition to these financial investments and and policy statements is, is really think about you know, having the mindset to embrace these new things. It, you know, change is difficult no matter where you are. And I I get that we would be reluctant to think about, you know, why do we need to do anything different? Uh, But if we can, can work on that gently without a bunch of finger wagging and make progress at getting people to sort of see the glasses more half full or to see this as, something that really offers a lot of promise rather than something that just introduces a lot of hassles and change into life. That will make a difference. When it comes to the protection of jobs, the Prime Minister told ITV's Robert Peston the creation of 12,000 new roles in data centres, which didn't previously exist, and that they are absolutely making sure that working people's jobs and what happens to them are their focus. Well, if you have a job which really only has the one task in it, Look for a different one that has more tasks, because as soon as that one task can be done by AI, you're out of a job. So that would be my first bit of advice. I think my second bit of advice in terms of how workers need to adapt, and this might sound a bit rebellious, so I understand and appreciate that. Don't wait for permission from your organization to engage these new tools and figure out how they could work for you. Experiment. This is going to be a little bit like the early days of the PC revolution or desktop publishing um, or, you know, local area networks. Those things came together and computing resources that could make a lot of work more productive went from being the province of a management information systems department who you had to go to and ask pretty please, will you do X, Y, Z for me, whatever your task was, to where you could sort of start to figure it out yourself. And there was software that kind of, you know, gave power to the people, so to speak, across organizations rather than kind of leaving it behind the glass houses of these IT domains. And something like that is already happening with AI. 
Um, so you shouldn't think that you need to be an AI engineer or a data scientist or a machine learning expert or something like that to find ways to use these things to your advantage. To hear the full story, join Mark Blunden on the Standard Podcast from 4pm. Now, new technology for people living with Parkinson's disease that's able to adjust treatment in real time based on brain activity to provide more personalised care has been approved for use in the EU and UK. We have been developing this uh, this methods in the last decades. Original research uh, started um, in London and Oxford uh, with first publications in 2013. Uh, that were experiments conducted um, in the lab. And since four years, this knowledge has been translated to DBS devices that were not able to only to stimulate, but also to record neural activity. And from then onwards, clinical trials were conducted to see whether the method is safe and viable for the patient. Yeah. That's neurologist Martin Budel from the Department of Neurology in Amsterdam University Medical Center. Medtronic has received CE mark approval for its BrainSense Adaptive Deep Brain Stimulation and BrainSense Electrode Identifier. At the same time, the first programming was completed today, performed by Martin, and he explained to Tech and Science Daily how the technology works. We developed a new therapy for patients with Parkinson's disease that automatically adjusts to the severity of the symptoms and it's done by recording brain activity that's analyzed and based on that the stimulation automatically goes up or down based on the requirements of the patients. The device itself looks like a small computer of say 5 by 1 by 5 centimeters that's implanted under the clavicle of the patients and connected with one or more leads inside the, the brain. And these electrodes uh, give the stimulation actually looks the same as the devices that were present before, but now it has the capacity to automatically adjust the stimulation. Next, Blue Origin has postponed launching its new Glenn rocket from Florida due to last minute issues with the vehicle. The rocket was due to launch at 6am GMT on Monday. The partially reusable new Glenn launcher had been ready for a liftoff after being loaded with methane and liquid oxygen propellants. But Blue Origin repeatedly pushed back the launch time, saying mission teams were examining what it described as a few anomalies. In a statement, the company said it was delaying today's launch attempt to troubleshoot a vehicle subsystem issue that will take us beyond our launch window. Let's go to a very quick break. Coming up... I had a very large ship not turn on its radio, heading directly towards me. The first woman attempting to row solo from Europe to South America. See you back here in just a minute. Welcome back. Firefighters in Los Angeles are battling to contain the wildfires still raging as the death toll from the devastating fires reaches 24. It comes ahead of more strong winds which threaten to push flames closer to cultural landmarks. The US National Weather Service issued red flag warnings as sustained winds of 50 miles per hour are predicted until Wednesday, with gusts of up to 70 miles per hour in the mountains. Meteorologists forecast Tuesday to likely be the most dangerous day. Next, a woman aiming to be the youngest person and first female rower to cross unsupported from Europe to South America has said she feels really grateful every day after seeing ocean fish and dolphins. And I saw a flying penguin today, which is also pretty cool considering that's impossible. So, good day. Um, I think the weather slows down again tomorrow though, so back to, back to one knot. What is that though? 21-year-old Zara Lachlan from Cambridge set off from the Portuguese Algarve on October 27th to row 3,600 nautical miles to French Guiana in a journey which was estimated to take around 90 days. I had a very large ship not turn on its radio heading directly towards me. You can see on the AIS where they're going to go and it was exactly me. And so I used a white flare. They still didn't reply on the radio. And they missed me by 0.1 of a mile, 
which is nothing. It's ridiculous. I'm very angry at them. An example there of Lachlan recording a travel diary. The rower has covered more than half of her journey and expects to finish in early February. However, she has had to overcome a cut leg, an injured arm and a broken finger, as well as a capsized boat and broken equipment. Lachlan will join the army in September as a technical officer, having completed a physics degree at Loughborough University. And finally, a cake depicting television presenter Claudia Winkleman has gone viral on TikTok. Features include Tic Tacs for teeth and black icing for her signature fringe and eyeliner. Boasting almost 200,000 views, the cake's creator, Londoner Keith Scovel, says he let his imagination go a bit crazy. Scovel's previous work includes Oasis, the King and Queen, plus US President-elect Donald Trump. And you're up to date. Come back for the Standard Podcast from 4pm. Tech and Science Daily returns tomorrow. For all the latest news, head to standard.co.uk.